We've got a new season, a new team, a new system, and a new outlook on life. We started off with a massive three-goal victory. Can we keep it going as we head into the Canadian Championship? And welcome, welcome, welcome back to episode number 14 of the American Dream. I am Mr. Cellophane, and we have started off season number two at Vancouver FC with a bang. You saw it in the last episode, a three Goal win against Pacific FC in the BC Derby on the road to get things kicked off. But we have only had a couple of days of rest. It is the preliminary round of the Canadian Championship against a very familiar foe. Because once again, we are taking on Calvary FC in the opening round. Now, last year, we played to a nil-nil draw and lost on penalties in, I think, the 12th round. I think it was 11-10 to was the final. Hoping for a better result this season. A couple of changes to the squad. Callum Irving is our cup goalkeeper, so he's going to be starting this match. He's going to have Giffard, Abatna, and Romeo in front of him, so no changes there. Basong and Farsi on the wingbacks once again. Vierhoven's going to drop back and pair with Isaiah Johnston, which means Ryan Beecher is going to get the start as the attacking playmaker. Pasher and Didier will be leading the line this afternoon. Now, we are not the favorites in this match. Last year, we had the advantage of playing at home. This time, we traveled to Calvary FC, and we have to worry about William Accio. He is the key player up front for Calvary. He scored a number of goals against us. Gaffard, though, heading it away from him. Beecher looking for Didier, but Calvary is going to take back over. Myroniak up the near sideline, sending it into the middle, looking for Akio. Gaffard is going to deal with him again. Basong just lays it back for Callum Irving, who will look to send it long. 30 seconds into this match, and already Calvary has been on the attack for most of it. Beecher, though, is going to take over in the midfield in the Calvary end. Verhoven receives the pass, looks to uh, move it forward, finds Beecher once again. Nice touch past his man. Beecher feeds Didier. Didier is in, shot on, saved by the keeper, and there's Tyler Pasher once again to redirect it into the goal. A minute in, it's Calvary nil. Vancouver won. Tyler Pasher has been Johnny on the spot these first couple of matches. He didn't score a ton of goals last year. He spent most of the year on the injured list. Didn't really come back until after our summer break. He's already got three in all competitions in the early going, and that is what we wanted to see when we signed him last year. He's getting up there in age. I think he's 31 now. He'll turn 32 during the season. But as long as he is going to continue to do a job, he will have a spot in this squad. No score in any of the other matches. Pacific and Valor, nil-nil. Victoria Highlanders and Vancouver Whitecaps. Well, we got a goal in each of those matches as the away team is leading in each of these. Bowden, was he offside? If not, he picked up his first goal of the year off of the flicked header. Great set-piece delivery from Calvary FC. And it's Shomei, who does have a bit of talent. We looked at him over the summer as a potential transfer target, but we didn't think he was going to fit very well in with the squad. But he helps bring Calvary back into this one. 1-1 one, one is your score. Calvary with four shots on goal. They did score on their first shot on target. We have to do a better job of defending those set pieces. As I mentioned, Valor and Vancouver Whitecaps have each taken 1-0 leads in their matches. Vancouver adding another as Barrial scoring in the 37th minute. Ticking down to the end of the first half and Vancouver enjoying the run of play for the final 20 minutes or so, but no further highlights. 1.54 XG. We really need to step it up. So we're taking our opportunities. We're not getting a ton of shots on target, which is something that we have been working on. We've been trying to get a little bit more accurate. Oh, we can pump our fists and say what we want to say. Loving it. Because I think that is what is pumping up our team more and more. Three changes for Calvary at the start of the second half. But we're going to start with the highlight. Farsi sending it into the middle. Montgomery looking to clear. Verhoeven nodding it down. But Harris is there to send it long. Miraniak gets under it. We're chasing after him. Somebody get in front of him. Feeds Varshevsky. Nice dribble around. Bivon with a shot. His first goal of the year, Tobias Vrashevsky with the assist. Irving diving, but just a little bit too slow. And this is what I was a little worried about in this competition. Callum Irving has not seen 
a ton of playing time. He did get a bit in the friendlies, but this is the reason why we brought George Marks in last season to begin with. Pacific FC did manage to draw that match 1-1, or at least pull even, in the last minute of the first half. Vancouver, though, running away on Victoria Highlanders, uh, who are in the division below us, so that's not a massive shock. We are going to look to make changes. Uh, I don't like what Beecher is doing, so we're going to move Verhoeven up and bring in Elliot Simmons. Tyler Pasher feeling a little bit tired. Didier is having a decent match with the assist, but he is going to cede his position to Mohamedou Kane. Hopefully we can get a little bit more going on the offense. Again, a good match from Didier, which is, he's starting to grow into the role. He's only 18 years old, so I thought that maybe it might take him a little bit of time, but hopefully he settles in quite nicely. Pasher feeding out the right wing. Farsi looking for Kane. Intercepted, though, by Gavrich. Pushed ahead. Taken away by Simmons. Johnston back for Farsi. Farsi looks to make something happen. He's got three men in the middle. Back post. It's Mohamedou Kane. And I look like a tactical genius. His first goal of the season coming off the bench in the last match as well. He has lost that starting position as we are trying to make things work with Didier and Pasher. We may make a change, you know, rotate him and Didier a little bit more. He's not really suited for the role that we have Pasher playing. That's why we have other guys. But 2-2 two, two, at your score with about 10 minutes left. And we very well could go to penalties unless we can score here. Pasher dropping it back. Efrard getting it up for Simmons. Runs into a bit of traffic. Still in control. Dropping it for a Botna. Geffrard with some room in front of him. Verhoeven looking for a runner. He's got Bassong on the left wing. Into the middle. Pasher is there. He delivers his second of the night. His fourth of the year. The flag stays down. And it's Calvary 2, Vancouver 3. With just over seven minutes remaining in this contest. And getting through to the next round is going to be huge. Now, it's going to cost us a little bit of money. We were improving our staff over this winter break. I'm, I'm so used to saying the summer transfer window before the season started. But it's actually winter. In order to... Because we can't offer a lot in wages. Our board denied us the ability to pay our staff more. We tried, believe me. We had to entice some of our top candidates with bonuses of us getting into the quarterfinals of this competition as Romeo missing the header. It's going to sail over the crossbar. Five minutes left to go. We are going to uh, try to waste a little bit of time and slow things down a little bit. We're doing well playing for set pieces, so I think that's going to be good. We'll also have our goalkeeper distribute it a little bit more slowly, and we'll drop our press back just a tad and not let anybody get behind us. We have doubled up the number of shots of Calvary. Carducci to send it long. Five minutes have been added. Romeo winning it. Kane in control. Into the middle of Verhoeven. Lays it for Johnson. Passes up to Pasher. Tries to push it back. His man drops for Bassong. Feeds it through to Verhoeven. And Noah Verhoeven with goals in his first two matches. And that should do it. Calvary 2. Vancouver 4. In added time. And Verhoeven looking like quite the pickup from Atletico Ottawa. Nice pass by Bassong. Picking up, I believe, his first assist of the season. So it looked a little hairy. We fell down 2-1 late in that first half. But we were able to battle back. Score three unanswered goals. And pick up a 2-4 win as we move on. So we go into the pot for the quarterfinals of the Canadian Championship. Now, just to remind you, we talked about this last year, or last season, I should say, a couple episodes ago. The winner of the Canadian Championship does earn a berth in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. We are going to have a tough row to hoe, however, as we are paired up against MLS side, the Vancouver Whitecaps. Valor gets Toronto FC. Halifax has to deal with CF Montreal. Atletico Ottawa is the only one that gets a league opponent in York United. Hopefully we can make some hay in the league before we get bounced from the competition. So coming off a spectacular win in the tournament, we headed into a tough battle in Toronto. Neither team could break through until the 75th minute. 
Di Rosario picking up his second goal of the year with the back post header, and that would be all York United would need to hand Vancouver our first loss of the season. We took 17 shots. Five of them found their way on target. We just could not take advantage of them. Although our ball movement was still very good, our strikers just unable to break through, which meant there was some concern in the air as we hosted last year's runner-up, Halifax, but... Those were put the rest two minutes in. Beautiful set-piece play. We did hire a new set-piece coach over the winter, and it paid off with a Mo Farsi's first goal of the year in the second minute, and then Bassong feeds it into the middle. Verhoeven delivers his third of the year, and then Verhoeven will get things started, dropping it for Abata. Up for Kane, over the top, blocked out, and played for Verhoeven. His second goal of the night, fourth of the season, and an easy 3-0 victory at home against what we thought would be a very tough team. But sometimes you do have to mitigate your expectations because a match that we thought would be an easy win at home against Atletico Ottawa in the rain turned out to be a slugfest. We took seven shots on target. Couldn't get anything past Nathan Ingham, although we did have opportunities. Mohamedou Kane just missing a close one as the minutes tick down in the second half. But ultimately, we had to settle for a nil-nil draw. And it didn't look good early as we once again headed to take on Calvary FC. Klomp with a back post header four minutes in gave Calvary the one-nil lead. But in the second half, we came alive. Didier feeding Pasher in behind the defense. Beats Carducci for his fifth goal of the year. Verhoeven on a set piece. Clanks it off of the woodwork. But Simmons is there to pot home his first. And Canusi feeding it out wide to Farsi as we picked up our third. Canusi, nice pass to Didier for his first senior goal at the age of 18. 3-1. So we've now beaten Calvary FC twice within our first six matches. And aside from the fact that we find ourselves on the top of the table after five league matches, I am feeling very good because we would have met the points goal that the board set out for us. We had to get eight in our first five. We ended up with 10. Three wins, a draw, and a loss as we sit on the top of the table on goal difference over Forge FC, Valor FC, and York United. Isaiah Johnston and Zoran Bassong are two of the top players as far as their average rating goes. And Noah Verhoeven with his three league goals puts him second in the league. We did keep things rather quiet in the transfer window. We did make the decision to send 17-year-old midfielder Fabrizio Nikolai out on loan for the year. He's going to be with the Vancouver Whitecaps U23 side, get a little bit more seasoning. Hopefully he can develop a little bit, work on uh, some of his passing attributes so he can maybe slot in next year in place of either Isaiah Johnston or Elliot Simmons. Or maybe we're just hoping to increase his value to get something for him if we decide to move on from the Italian-Canadian dual national. We will be a touch shorthanded as we head to BC Place for a very tough matchup in the quarterfinals of the Canadian Championship. Isaiah Johnston strained his groin in the 3-1 win over Calvary FC. So Elon Canusi is going to take his spot in the midfield. We're also bringing Rocco Romeo back in to sub out for Abdu Samake and Mohamedou Kane is going to get the start. He's a little bit stronger than Didier. So we'll see if he can do a job against the Vancouver defense. It's going to be Marks and Goal with Gaffard, Abatna, and Romeo as our back three. Basong and Farsi on the wings with Simmons and Hanusi in the midfield. Ahead of them will be Noah Verhoeven, who has had a fantastic season. Four goals already on the early year. Tyler Pasher's got five. He'll be paired up front with Mohamedou Kane. A lot of fist pumping in the locker room to get the team fired up. I am feeling it myself. Now, Mohamedou Kane just coming off of an injury of his own, so we are going to keep a very close eye on his fitness, make sure he does not re-aggravate that, but he should be good to play. Our medical staff has cleared him, and... Vancouver Whitecaps. It's hard because we got Vancouver and Vancouver in the match stats in the left corner. Uh, they've got the first three shots of the match, but Pasher back post can't get his head on it. It is cleared, but Song will track it down. Simmons moving it forward. Thinks about feeding Bashong, but he passes it back Rafard. He's got Pasher. Pasher is deep. 
for Besong. He's taken out. Penalty has been called on the hard tackle. And this could be a massive break for Vancouver FC. As Mo Farsi steps up. And oh my goodness. Takuaka getting a hand on it and deflecting it out behind. It will lead to a Vancouver FC corner. Pasher in. Giffard on target. And what a save by Takayoka. Finally got that name right. Second time around. 23 minutes on the clock. Shots are just about even. We have had the better of the XG story, of course, because of the missed penalty attempt by Mo Farsi. But Rocco Romeo looking to play it forward. He's got Farsi along the near sideline. Thinks about pushing it past his man, but runs into some traffic. So we'll lay it off for Romeo, who will just drop it all the way back to George Marks. Looking to get things started. A bot in the back for Marks. Ahead, Jems Giffard. Trying to go up the left wing. Besson throwing it over the line. Pasher in, shoots, and scores. Sixth goal of the year in all competitions for Tyler Pasher. And it's Whitecaps nil, Vancouver FC 1. I guess I should call us the Eagles. We do have a nickname. Whitecaps nil, Eagles 1. What a beautiful ball by Basong. Pasher beats Takaoka to his right. He came out, tried to cut down the angle, but ultimately couldn't do much. On the ensuing kickoff, though, the Whitecaps will control. Laborda plays it up for Tolkien, who does have some space. Coming over to try to challenge a little bit is Canusi. Schaff in the middle. Cisse back for Schaff. Finds Barrial, whose shot is going to go wide. Marks Cut down the angle. He made him think twice about it. And on the left foot just could not curl it inside that far post. Basang with the throw in in the Vancouver end. Getting it into the box for Kane. Kane turns, fires, and scores. Second goal of the year for Mohamedou Kane. And it is Whitecaps nil. Eagles two. Two goals in four minutes. And I did not think that we were going to be able to do this against an MLS side. I mean, there's still 60 minutes of football left to be played. But not only are we doing this against an MLS side, we are doing it against an MLS side in their building. So if we can enter the locker room at 2-0, I will be a very happy manager. I'll be even happier if it's 3. Farsi with the throw in. Kane playing it into the box, looking for Verhoeven, but Cubas will cut that off. Powell looking to send it forward. Deber in control for the Whitecaps. Four minutes remaining on the clock, plus whatever time is added on by the fourth official here in this first half. Deeper spins it into the middle. Schaff leaving it for Kubas. Runs into some traffic. Tolkien looking to retreat before getting it to Schaff. Near side for Barial. Barial back for Kubas. Good possession numbers right now for the Whitecaps. Sending it forward. Romeo is going to step in front of it, and Verhoeven will take over. Geffrard. Looking for Besong. Touch pass in the middle. He's got Pasher. Pasher wide to the right. Mo Farsi. Mo Farsi into the box. Squares. Kane scores. Second goal of the night. A brace for Mohamedou Kane. His third of the year. And it's Whitecaps nil. Eagles three. Told you I wouldn't mind if it were three nil as we headed into the half. Mo Farsi doing a good job. The, the defender kind of gave him his space. Backed off which allowed him to make... The perfect square pass over for Mohamedou Kane, which he's able to put past Takaoka to give Vancouver FC a 3-0 lead. Perfect first half, no notes. Although Hanusi is, is getting a little bit tired out there, so Bailey Curtis, the youngster, may have to get some playing time. The Whitecaps have outshot us 10-5, but all five of our shots have been on target. Three of them have hit pay dirt. On the set piece, ball played back out wide for Deber. Deber, he's got some space. He'll tuck it inside that far post. And Deber Caicedo, with his sixth goal of the year, brings the Whitecaps back within two. It's Vancouver 1, Vancouver FC 3. And Caicedo sent it in. Bassong played it away, but right into the path of Deber. It took way too long for a defender to get out there. And it was Elliot Simmons. And frankly, that's... Not really his job. We've hit the hour mark. We are going to make the change and bring Hanusi out. Bailey Curtis is going to come in. We could also have potentially dropped Verhoeven and brought in 
a more attacking player, but I think we're going to go for like the more defensive stance. Ball sent long. Geffrard wins the header. Hanusi, who is still on the pitch. We have not officially made the change. Back for Romeo. Ahead for Verhoeven. He's got a runner in Mo Farsi, but he'll play it for Hanusi to his left. Across. Bassong. Power can intercept. Bassong in. And Takaoki makes himself huge and makes the save. It'll be out for a corner. Vancouver FC. Bailey Curtis does check into the match. 12 to 6 year shots. On goal, now 12-7 in favor of the Vancouver Whitecaps, but six of our seven shots on target. I cannot stress this enough because that is something that has been a massive problem for us so far this year. Tyler Pasher is a bit tired. He's going to give way for Didier. Now, Kane and Didier will swap roles. I think Kane is the more physical of the two. Meanwhile... Zoran Bashong has played a fantastic game. He is a little bit tired. I don't really have anyone perfect for the position, but Tyler Crawford is going to come in as our left wing back. He's usually more of more of the fullback mode, but you know, same position, just 10 yards ahead. Nice save by Marks on the set piece, by the way. 10 minutes remaining on the clock as he drops it down and boots it long. Nobody there but Whitecaps players, so Powell will just drop it back for Takaoka who looks to send it forward. Barial up the left wing for Gold. He'll go out on the overlap. Gold switch a play to the near side Powell. Up the line. Shuff quickly in for Cisse. He's got Robinson in. Marks dove. Should have made the should have made the save. Not the greatest effort by George Marks, if you ask me. Fantastic pass in for Robinson, who is able to get the white caps back on the board and back within one so i think it's time we try to shut this game down so to do that we're going to change our shape now this may be a bit bold so we are going to move our wing backs back in line with our center backs it's literally going to be a flat back five and we're going to drop our midfield as well Conversely, with that, we're also going to slow the tempo down, knock up the time wasting. We will play for set pieces because we're very good. And we're going to try to hit early crosses instead of work the ball into the box, uh, which means we're just going to get the ball a little bit more forward. That could be a bit risky. Meanwhile, we are going to slow the pace down and roll it out to our back line while we're also dropping our lines. We're not going to press as much. Our back line is not going to be as far forward. We're going to give them a little more space to work in the middle third. Hopefully, it's going to work out for us. There's only seven minutes left. And a final third throw in for Vancouver. Schaff to get it in. Cisse in control. Into the middle. Ebenga, Bariel, Baraduogo. Gold is in. And Ryan Gold scores. A minute is all it took for us to give up the goal. This, my friends, is why you just should leave your tactics alone in match because ultimately you're going to get screwed by football manager. Vancouver Whitecaps 3, Vancouver FC Eagles 3, we're going to pens. And I think a situation like this could be where the quality of the Vancouver Whitecaps shines through. We're shooting first. Mohamedou Kane picks out the top corner. George Marks steps onto his line. He'll face Schaff, the right footer. Marks dove the right way, but Schaff right up the middle. Beerhoven, one of our top goal scorers, does not disappoint. 2-1, Vancouver FC. Gould, who scored the equalizer with just five minutes left in this match, steps up and hits the post. First miss of the match, and it was for the Vancouver Whitecaps. Alan Didier, the 18-year-old. The biggest pressure moment of his career. And Takaoka makes the save. Because of course he does. Powell is the third shooter for the Whitecaps. Steps up. And delivers. Marks guessed correctly, but could not make the stop. 2-2. Fourth shooter on. It will be Elliot Simmons. Take your time. Take your time. Uh, he just runs in. Oh, my goodness gracious. He fooled Takaoka. Robinson in there, the right footer. Delivers for the Whitecaps to tie things back up at three. Now we're just waiting for somebody to mess up. 
Please, God, let it not be Mo Farsi. He, he already missed the penalty in this one. He did not make the same mistake twice. And now it all comes down to Berdugo and George Marks. Who is going to win this battle? Berdugo, the left footer, slots it home just inside the post. And we are once again tied at four. The center back, 21-year-old Abatna. Two take the shot, and Takayoka makes the save. Well, it was a good run, and we had a 3-0 lead heading into the locker room. I think complacency may have set in a little bit. Maybe if we were going to make changes, we should have made a little sooner. I think we panicked. Cisse gets marks to go the wrong way, and the Vancouver Whitecaps are moving on. So ultimately, Chalk wins out as the 2022 champion Vancouver Whitecaps move on to the semifinals. Bit of a disappointment, but we move. This just means we can concentrate on the league. We've got Forge FC breathing down our necks. Just a small goal difference, difference between the two of us as we try to put some space between us and the competition. Also, Halifax currently at the bottom of the table. They are coming up. We'll see those highlights. Pacific FC in the second of four BC derbies. And then I think the second live commentary may be us looking for revenge against the one team we could not, well, there were two teams who couldn't get past United and the team that we should have beaten the first time at Let It Go Ottawa. If you like that, make sure you drop a like on this video. Please get in front of as many people as possible. You guys have done amazing things to help grow the channel since we started this series just over two weeks ago, and I'd love for it to continue. Thank you for all that you have done. Subscribe if you have not, and come back tomorrow for more Vancouver FC as we chase the American dream of winning the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Until then, bye-bye.